I'm going to teach you guys how to make a painterly background. Hi, I'm Vanessa. Welcome to my channel. If you're new here, I like to make videos about self portraits, book cover photography, anything that's creative photography related that I do all by myself. Today, I'm going to be teaching you how to make these painted backgrounds. And you might be asking yourself, if this is a photography channel, why are you teaching us to paint? I like to use these for basically three different things. And if you're not new here, and you might have seen my video where I was shooting for book covers behind the scenes, I was using these as a background for photos. So basically what I do is I put things on them and then I take a photo and I submit it for book covers. So that's one of the ways that I use these. The other thing that I like to do is to take a picture or scan it if it fits in my scanner and then I use them digitally in Photoshop as backgrounds or I like to convert them into black and white and use them as not just background texture but like if I want texture on something else. If you're excited to learn how to make these painted backgrounds, hit the like and let's get started. So first of all, I wanna say that I Typically like to paint in lots of watered down layers. I like the way that it tends to blend and show colors a little bit underneath and it just gives it a really good painterly look in my opinion. I don't only paint with acrylics. I do make watercolor backgrounds and sometimes oil paint backgrounds. And so the technique is a little bit different for those. I use a small brush because I feel like that gives it a good texture if it was too large it would be just huge brush strokes but that's really a preference that's just something that maybe you would want to have in your painterly backgrounds so if you want to use a large brush and have bigger brush strokes then that's totally okay go for it do it if you're a new painter if you're not skilled at blending things i would suggest to sticking with maybe one color and white or one color and gray or maybe just colors that go that will mix well together like blue and pink and purple if you want to try and blend like red and green if you over blend it it will get muddy and mucky looking so you want to stay away from anything like that unless you are fairly skilled at blending colors and even then i typically wouldn't do that with acrylic if i was going to go with contrasting color blends i would probably use oil i find it a little bit easier to manage but that's just for myself and that's just how i would do it all of these supplies i buy from the dollar store they're just dollar store craft paint dollar store canvases for 10 bucks you can get a few um items and be set up with a few different backgrounds and you'll have paint left over definitely for sure <laughs> so it's really cheap and fairly simple and easy. If you don't like waiting in between layers, you can see that I use a hair dryer to dry the layers in between. And that is typically all that it really takes. Sometimes I get only a few layers on and I feel like it's not looking like how I want it to. And then I'm just like, yo, girl, do four more layers and see how you feel about it. And typically, after I do a few more layers, that's when I start to really love it. And so if you're getting halfway and you're feeling a little bit disgruntled about it, just do a few more layers, keep going. There's no right or wrong. <laughs> if you want to change your mind halfway through, just paint over it again. Eventually, if you're just painting on top of paint on top of paint, you will lose the canvas texture underneath. But who cares? You still have the paint texture and it'll still look good. So don't beat yourself up over it. This, we're not trying to be Van Gogh here. We're just trying to paint some backgrounds that we can use in Photoshop. I also want to say like I, once I get these in Photoshop, I will clean them up a little bit. So if there's like a bristle hair or something that got stuck in the canvas, I will just use the spot healing brush to take that out. So don't get too hung up on that kind of stuff either really take it easy on yourself especially if you're not an artist with any painting skill at all you don't need to be <laughs> you just need to um give it a shot 
So you might be thinking, that's great, Vanessa, but I really don't want to spend the 10 bucks and go to the craft store or dollar store and pick the stuff up and then have to find storage for it and then waste my time painting all these like background paintings and then find storage for them. Maybe that's just not your thing. Well, you're in luck because I have all of these available as a digital download on my Gum Road shop. So if you would rather just purchase mine, <laughs> They're available. It, the download is $8. You'll get all of these plus their black and white textures. So you'll get 12 different high resolution JPEG files that you can use and get started right away. So maybe you've never used a texture or a composite background before. And if that's true, then I'm going to do a very quick tutorial demonstration with one of these to give you guys an idea of how you can use them. If you need something more in depth, like a more in depth tutorial about all of these skills, just let me know in the comments and I can probably put together a full tutorial on that. But for the most part, you should be able to get the basic idea um, right now. So let's get into that. Okay, so I have an image here. It's just whatever. Um, I shot this with a gray sheet in the background and I chose this image because it's kind of dark over here and it's kind of light over here so I'll be able to show you a range of different things. I've brought in one of the images and the great thing about these textures is they you can stretch them around a little bit like this is the square one but I can change the size and the shape and it's not gonna look too wonky like if I did it to the extreme like this or something yeah it starts to look wonky but I can go like this and it will be fine right now this is just on normal blend mode and what I would do now is I would test out different blend modes just to see what I would get so here I have it set to screen and I really like how it's affecting the darker side so if I had an image with a darker gray background I know that it would look really nice all over. And what I would do at this point is I would mask softly because if I'm making a painterly portrait, it doesn't have to be like super meticulous. I don't need every little hair strand to come through because most likely um, I'm going to be softening the image all over for the painterly look. So I don't worry too much about it. I just start masking it out. So obviously I would do a better job masking if I was actually doing this for real, but you get the idea just from that alone. Now, if you change the background blend modes, you'll get different effects. So this is lighten and this is just lightening the areas that were dark. We could do darken and it'll darken the areas that were light. You could do normal mode if you have a very busy background and you can't just do a blend mode on top if you need to just completely cover it like maybe there's a tree in the background or something you might want to have it on a normal mode just to cover it completely in that case i would definitely take a little bit more time touching up around hair and edges and stuff like that but it's totally doable so that is how i would use it for a background if you need to learn more about removing people in Photoshop or removing backgrounds in Photoshop so that you could just paste the person like right on top of the painted backgrounds. I do have videos helping with that. I have one of these dark black and white textures as well. So this is an example of how I would use maybe one of these. So let's say for some reason I wanted to put this on the shirt and just give the shirt like a painted texture. I would basically be doing the same thing, except this time I would most definitely be doing a blend mode and I wouldn't be doing normal. If it was normal, it would look really weird to cover the shirt. So um, for this one, I think multiply and I will drag it to where I like it. Lots of times soft light works nice or overlay, overlay can work really nice too, but uh, I like multiply for this one. So this part's really up to you how you would wanna do it but I am going to add a mask to this and then invert the mask so that when I paint in, I'm painting the texture on and not taking away. So then I just zoom into the area that I wanna add texture to and I start adding texture. 
So here I have the shirt with some texture on it, but maybe I decided that I'm not crazy about the placement because I can move it around. So I unlink the mask from the image and now I can drag the image around and the mask stays in the same spot and I can change maybe where I want the texture to be. I can also use this entire thing over the image completely for kind of a painterly texture over the entire photograph. So those are some of the ways that you can use these files. There are other types of overlays or textures that you want to learn how to make yourself. Just leave me a comment and let me know what they are. Some ideas that I have to do maybe in the future are smoke overlays, um, snow overlays, things like that. I can teach you how to make them or if you don't want to make them, I can also add them to my digital shop. So just let me know what your preferences are and I am happy to oblige. If you haven't already, subscribe to stay up to date on all the things that I'm creating. I'm a little bit more interactive over on Instagram, so if you want to connect there, you can find my account, wild underscore empress. Thanks so much for watching. Hope you guys have a great day.